Our subject in this video is tracing formulas and pathways through Greet Excel. The Excel model is spread out over many worksheets, so fuel pathways tend to be a little more scattered than the neat sequential diagrams that we see in Greet.net. To understand all the inputs in a pathway, we usually need to look at an energy or emission result and trace the references in the formula that calculate that result. And I'll demonstrate some ways to do that here. First, I'll use the Excel feature called Trace Precedence to track down upstream references. Then I'll examine a formula for patterns in the cell references as a shortcut for knowing what the values might mean. And finally, I'll pick apart a formula for really minute analysis. Just to note that this video was made using Greet 2014. The results worksheet is probably the best place for us to begin because it has well-to-pump results for fuel pathways as well as well-to-wheels results parsed into feedstock, fuel, and vehicle operation phases of the pathway. For the purpose of demonstration in this video, I'll be tracing formulas for total energy for well-to-pump results. Before I start the example, if you're familiar with the trace precedence feature, feel free to skip ahead to the next section. If you're not familiar, in this version of Excel, the feature is under the Formulas heading in the main menu, and to see how it works, I'll go to the Well to Pump Summary table and click on the cell for total energy in the baseline gasoline pathway. Simply click the Trace Precedence button, and arrows will appear that point to our cell. What we're seeing are links from the cells referenced in our formula. I can double-click an arrow to navigate to a referenced cell, then double-click again to jump back. A dashed line arrow is linked to a go-to window, which lists references on other worksheets. There's also a trace dependence feature that functions the same way but points to cells that refer to this cell. Now we can start digging into the formula and references. The first thing I'll mention is the arrows pointing to references here on the results sheet are for unit selection. You can see them in the formula in the terms that begin with the HLOOKUP function. These references don't help trace the fuel pathway, but they do tell us the units for the result value. Second, I'll open the GOTO window by double-clicking the dashed line arrow. There are two references to the input sheet, though they're for the same cell, and there are references to the petroleum sheet. I'll double-click the Inputs reference to jump to that cell. And it's the share of reformulated gasoline in total gasoline use by volume, with a share value of 100%. I can go back to the original cell by pressing F5, then Enter, and we can explore how this reference fits in the formula that we're analyzing. This 100% RFG share is multiplied by the next term in the formula, and then there's a term where the 100% RFG share is subtracted from 1, which will be 0. So it appears that the baseline gasoline pathway is made up entirely of reformulated gasoline. Next, we'll look at the petroleum references. Notice that the petroleum cell B259 appears twice. I'll click there, and the value is total feedstock energy for crude for use in U.S. refineries. I'll hit F5 and Enter to jump back. I'll open the GoTo table, and the next petroleum references are F258 and F259. I'll select the F259 reference, and the value is total fuel energy for gasoline, which is reformulated gasoline, or RFG. Recall that F258 is also in our formula, and that's the loss factor for gasoline. Jumping back, the formula is mostly decoded. There's a mix of two gasoline pathways, RFG and non-RFG, which would be gasoline blend stock. And each pathway is multiplied by its share from the input sheet. The references to petroleum D258 and D259 don't affect the result because they're multiplied by a zero share, 1 minus 100%, but we can see what they are and their total energy and loss factor for the gasoline blend stock fuel. So, I was able to determine which references were most important for calculating my result value by using the trace precedence tool, 
and that really simplified the equation. Some of the references were zero or multiplied by zero, and others were for unit conversion. Only four of the references were actually used to calculate the result value. For the next example, we'll look at total well-to-pump energy for the pathway called Grid Connected SI PHEV, low-level ethanol blend with gasoline, and electricity. While Greet Excel contains thousands of formulas, a lot of them use similar formats. Here I'll try to get a sense of the calculation just by looking at values and patterns in the formula to do some quick analysis before jumping around to other worksheets. At first glance, we can see most references go to the vehicles sheet, though there are two references that stay on the results sheet, AN14 and D14. These references are each at the beginning of long terms, which are added together to get the result value. Since the value we're analyzing is in row 14 and it's a total energy value, we can assume that AN14 and D14 are also total energy values, but for different fuels. And given that our fuel pathway involves E10 gasoline and electricity, the results references are likely total energy results for these other two pathways. We can verify that by scrolling to D14, which is total energy for E10 gasoline, and AN14 is total energy for U.S. electricity mix. Now to the vehicles references. There are two groupings of vehicles references in the formula, F21 and F22, which appear multiple times, and references to row 55. First we'll look at F21 and F22. Here's a really great tip to remember anytime you're using Greed Excel. You can convert a reference in the formula bar to its value just by highlighting it and pressing the key F9, which I'll do with the first vehicle's reference, F21. The value is 0.567. And just remember to press Escape to revert back to the reference or the value will remain in the formula. Next, I'll check the value of the F22 reference, which is 0.433. Now, 0.567 and 0.433 add up to 1. So there's a good chance that F21 and F22 refer to a share distribution. I'll go to the vehicles sheet to verify. These references specify the share of vehicle miles traveled by charge depleting and charge sustaining operations for our vehicle. If you don't already know, charge depleting operation is when the vehicle is using energy from the battery pack, i.e. electricity, whereas charge sustaining operation is when the vehicle is using both the battery and liquid fuel to achieve uh, an optimal efficiency while maintaining a state of charge in the battery. Since our pathway uses these two operation modes, their shares add up to one, just as I thought. The other vehicle's references are all in row 55, and the three references are AZ55, BA55, and BB55. I'll jump over to the vehicle sheet to see just what these values are. Row 55 is for miles per gallon for each vehicle operation. And the three operation modes referenced in the original formula are all for a grid-connected plug-in electric vehicle with low-level ethanol blend with gasoline. There's charge depleting electric with charger, charge depleting on board, and charge sustaining mode. Clicking on AZ55 and BA55, we see the reference to inputs E1290, which, if you remember, is the share of RFG in total gasoline use. BB55 is a value for charge sustaining operation mode, so its formula refers to other gasoline vehicle values. So, generally speaking, our original formula is using shares of different operating modes to calculate the proportions of the total energy of two other pathways that combine to equal the total energy of our pathway. At this point, we know that everything upstream is going to be found in the gasoline and electricity pathways. In the final example, I'll show you a list of each reference in a formula along with its description. Making such a list can be a pretty tedious task depending on the length of the formula, but it may be the best way to thoroughly understand all of the upstream inputs in a pathway. 
we'll look at corn grain ethanol. Again, I'll restrict analysis to total energy for the pathway. Our formula has three parts contributing to this ethanol blend. Dry mill without corn oil, dry mill with corn oil, and wet mill. I focused on dry mill with corn oil, which comes from a few columns over. And I listed the references for the ethanol fuel portion of the pathway. The value in cell F483 is for total energy of the ethanol in the dry milling pathway with corn oil extraction. And that value is 1,242,000 BTUs per million BTUs of ethanol. Next to the value, I copied the formula, and below the Excel formula, I substituted generic variables for the references. You can see in the following list each variable, the reference it represents, the value of that reference, and its description. The formula contains the total energy to produce the ethanol in units of BTUs per gallon, then some conversion factors to get to BTUs per million BTUs, loss factors for losses sustained during transportation, distribution, and storage, then the energy to transport and distribute the ethanol. The most significant references are shaded. They are total energy in dry mill ethanol production and total energy in transportation and distribution. As a last step, I calculated the formula using the values in my list to make sure I copied the correct references, and that result is in red. A formula with only eight references is pretty easy to break out. This one probably took about a half hour. When I finished that, I moved to the significant upstream references, O447 and ED447. As you can see, the formula for total energy in ethanol production is substantially more dense with dozens of references. A formula of this size takes around four or five hours to break out, but once that's done, you can pretty well understand the upstream inputs used to calculate the resulting value. There's a pattern to the references in which the input energy for a particular fuel or material input coming from Table 3 on the ethanol worksheet is multiplied by a factor that incorporates the upstream fuel and feedstock energy. This is a common pattern for summary formulas in Table 3 on many worksheets in Greed Excel. I don't want to overwhelm you too much with this method of understanding formulas, but just know that while it may take some time to break equations out like this, you gain quite a bit of familiarity with the pathway that you're trying to understand. With that, we'll wrap up, and you can check out the links to the Excel examples shown in this video if you want to look at them more closely. And thanks for watching.